Hey, my life is boring again for the first time in six months. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And today I'm going to be doing a special movie review on a movie released in the year 2011. And it is a Thai film by the name of Uncle Bunmi, who can recall his past lives or in Thai. I'm going to butcher it. I'm sorry. Lung Bunmi Raluek Chap. And it is written and directed by Apichapong Wira Setakul, who is a director that I have been really, really wanting to get into, but really uh, scared to get into because uh, I have heard that his films are all extremely slow paced, strange, very meditative, and I'm kind of scared of that stuff. I like my fair share of art house cinema. Uh, some slow movies really, really work well for me. Yee Yee, Drive My Car, Seventh Seal. I love that shit. Okay, I love that. Um, yes, it's called The Seventh Seal. Um, but then sometimes there are movies that are really, really slow that I just didn't enjoy. I'm sorry for being a snob. But there are slow films that I don't enjoy. And then whenever I enjoy slow films, I'm suddenly pretentious now. But movies like uh, Damnation that I recently watched, Once Upon a Time in Anatolia, as well as, hell, even movies like Flowers of Shanghai, I think are really difficult for me to enjoy. I ended up enjoying Flowers of Shanghai quite a bit, but the other two films that I just mentioned, I'm taking points off because... I did not enjoy it that much. So going into Api Chakpong Wida Setakul's filmography, I was pretty scared. But at some point I was like, you know what, screw it. If I don't enjoy it, might as well. So I'm and I've ended up watching Uncle Bumi Who Can Recall His Past Lives, which won Palm Door. And it's a very important Palm Door because this is the first Southeast Asian film to ever win a Palm d'Or. That is freaking history. Yet nobody talks about it for some reason. So here I am talking about this movie, telling you all that this movie is freaking great. So essentially, this movie is about uh, a middle-aged man in Thailand who uh, who goes to uh, some middle of nowhere house. Um, with his sister-in-law and his sister-in-law's son, uh, you know, for vacation, I guess. I don't know. And at the same time, he had kidney failure. And there's a doctor from Laos who is treating him, giving him dialysis tubing. And uh, essentially, he faces his mortality. And if I explain anything more, I'm just spoiling the movie. So, yeah, there are... Only a few movies and only a few directors where I watch and I go, oh my god, this this is the style. Like there are movies, um, there are movies I would watch and I would really enjoy it, but it isn't necessarily in my style. But I can't say the same for Uncle Boon Me right here. The still shots, the long takes, the wide shots. Uh, and, and sort of this slow pacing is just really, really good and really, really me. Of course, when if I do become a successful filmmaker, let's not make assumptions here, I probably wouldn't make movies as slow as this. I would probably make them way more accessible, but equally, I will... I love using still shots. I love long takes. I love wide shots. I love shots where you see the whole picture and the subjects the talents, the actors are just small and tiny and they're doing their own thing in a corner or something. And the viewers have to divert their eye contact to the very corner of the frame instead of moving the camera around just for these actors. I really, really appreciate that. And it makes a lot of beautiful imagery because a good 95% of this movie it's just forests, it's just trees. But Api Chapong Wira Setaku always finds interesting ways to frame these trees and its relationships with people and monkeys and weird other creatures that will essentially turn up in this movie. So that's another thing I really want to talk about when talking about this movie, and that is I love his very nonchalant way of depicting mythology. So 
A lot of films depict mythology in a very flashy, fantastical, Hollywood ass way. I don't really like that. Api Chapong essentially does that in the complete polar opposite. When ghosts and monkey ghosts, or I would like to call them monkey demons because they're not really ghosts. When ghosts and monkey demons and weird talking creatures start showing up in this movie, Api Chapong essentially treats it like it's just a regular Tuesday and there's nothing wrong going on. And because of how nonchalant he is with these supernatural elements, it ends up transporting the viewers into the world even more because we're not shocked by it. We're there, we're absorbing it, and we're treating it like it's a normal thing as well, which makes it really transportive. And it also, in some ways, makes me feel like I'm uh, uh, listening to a, a, a mythical folklore instead of uh, witnessing reality, which gives this film such a dreamy, surreal vibe that I really like, especially the part in the movie where suddenly, for about 10 or 15 minutes, we jump away from the main storyline to this random storyline that takes place in some random nowhere in some random time period where we have a princess uh, beside a lake. She looks at the lake and the reflection is a different person. And then suddenly a catfish starts talking to her and essentially she essentially has sex with a catfish, which is absolutely freaking insane. But, but the entire sequence to me feels like A, a dream sequence, B, a flashback, perhaps this is what birthed the first life of Uncle Boon Mi, but also it doesn't feel like a movie. It doesn't feel like uh, just a, a reflection of reality or something like that. It feels like uh, a folklore. And because of how timeless and placeless it is, it feels even more like a folklore. It's like a story that your grandparents would tell you without explaining why, without elaborating and your grandparents' grandparents told them, and it is just sort of this verbal art, this oral tradition. And another beautiful thing about this film is really how it handles mortality. This film is about the good things about mortality, about leaving, being free from the shackles of earthly matters, but it also is about how little it means. Like once you die, it doesn't really mean much. You'll just be in another realm. You'll just be wandering in another place, in another time. And uh, to end off, I really love the final uh, end credits of the movie because uh, the entire movie is so slow and surreal, so musicless and so strange and haunting. And then at the end, it just plays this mainstream peppy rock song, this pop rock song. and. It immediately pulls us back to reality and the modern times, but also it just tells us, hey, it doesn't matter. You know, maybe you'll run into a ghost. Maybe uh, you're facing mortality. Maybe you're going to run into a gang of monkey ghosts and maybe uh, weird things will happen. But it's okay because it is what it is. That's life. And uh, it's a beautiful way to end off the movie. So I end up really enjoying it. Maybe, it could, maybe it's because I already know what to expect um, before going to the movie, but I ended up really enjoying it. And I recommend this movie to uh, uh, hardcore film fans. I'm giving Uncle Boomy, who can recall his past lives, a light nine out of 10. So have you watched Uncle Boomy? Comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.